Hey, what is up everyone? I hope all of you are doing great. In today's video, I will be explaining about Coriolis force. So in the last couple of videos, many people have commented and asked me to solve their doubts on Coriolis force. So I thought of making a small video uh, where I will be talking about the concept of Coriolis force, the how it is being originated and uh, what is the reason behind it. Okay, So let us get started. So let us start with some vector mechanics. Okay, uh, Now I have taken two frame of references. One is an inertial frame which is stationary and uh, one will be a rotating frame. I have named it as S prime. Okay, So as you can see the coordinate system drawn using bold lines. Okay, These are inertial frame of reference. Okay, The coordinates are for inertial frame of reference. And the rotating frame which is actually rotating with an angular velocity omega keeping the z axis constant okay as you can see r in the subscript represents a rotating frame it is drawn in dotted lines okay so the z axis is common for both of them right now please see this thing that if i consider a particle p right the position vector from the origin with respect to any one of these frames will be same. So, I have written r initial uh, sorry r inertial equals r rotating equals to r I mean due to with respect to both the frames the position vector will be same right because their origins are same and of course their z axis is also same. Now, uh, I have already said this that the if the particle p is stationary in s frame the observer in oh sorry uh, if now listen to this one. If the particle p is stationary in s frame, the observer in the rotating s prime frame will see the particle is moving oppositely with a linear velocity minus omega cross r. Right? So, suppose uh, if you are standing on a rotating frame and uh, if you try to observe a particle which is stationary with respect to an inertial frame, you will see that the particle is rotating in the opposite sense with a linear velocity of omega cross r. So, this negative sign represents that it is actually moving in the opposite sense. I think this is a easy concept of relative velocity. I do not think I need to explain this one. Now, if the velocity of a particle in the s frame is written as rate of change of position vector, this subscript i represents the inertial frame. Now, similarly, the rate of change of position vector and of course, in both the cases position vectors are same. Uh, this subscript represents the rotating frame. So, these two can be connected using this relation uh, minus omega cross r because as I have already explained here, this is due to the relative motion. Right? So, we can write that uh, rate of change of position vector with respect to inertial frame equals to rate of change of position vector with respect to rotating frame plus omega cross r. So, just arranging it. And now, if we compare both sides and remove this r vector, okay, we can get a new operator which is actually valid for which will actually connect this differential operator with inertial frame as well as a rotating frame. This is a very important property which you might study in your first uh, year of uh, engineering. Right? So, let v i be the velocity vector with respect to the inertial frame and just plug this v i in this operator, you will get something like this. Now, as you can see, this is nothing but the acceleration of the particle with respect to the inertial frame. Okay, Acceleration of the particle with respect to the rotating frame. Oops, sorry, you cannot write this as rotating frame because v i vector is there. So, you need to replace v i in the form of v r. Okay. So, we know that v i equals v r plus omega cross r, we have already discussed here. So, this is nothing but v i equals v r plus omega cross r. right? So, just use this formula and plug it here. You will get something like this d v i d t with respect to the inertial frame right? equals d d t of just put the value here. You get omega cross this one. So, just simplify it, differentiate it and uh, arrange it properly. You will see that acceleration with respect to the inertial frame is equal to acceleration with respect to the rotating frame plus twice of omega cross 
rate of change of wait a minute this should be r here there should be an r here okay now this makes sense see so omega cross rate of change of position vector with respect to rotating frame plus the same thing so there will be a 2 here this portion is coming here and this rate of change of omega cross r is this one now if omega is constant okay if omega is constant uh, you just uh, cancel this one out now as you can see that the acceleration with respect to the inertial frame and the acceleration with respect to the rotating frame is connected by this formula so there are two additional terms okay so acceleration with respect to the rotating frame is equal to ai minus this thing now multiplying both sides with mass m after that we'll get the equation of force so fr is the force acting on the particle while you are observing standing on the rotating frame equals f i that is the force on the particle with respect to the inertial frame that means this thing this vector consists of all the real forces that are actually acting on the particle and as you know we get extra number of pseudo forces so these are the two pseudo forces which are acting while you are observing the particle standing on the rotating frame I think you are familiar with this formula remember 2016 je advanced disc a uh, groove is made passing through the uh, through a diameter of a disc uh, i may we might solve that question in our next video so just keep the uh, hit the subscribe button stay in touch with this channel uh, so let us continue further so this thing is the centrifugal force okay this part this term is the centrifugal force okay and this term is the Coriolis force. Uh, we know what is centrifugal force, but Coriolis force is the main character here. Our earth might give you the best example um, for Coriolis as well as centrifugal force. So, first let us work with the centrifugal force, then we will come to the Coriolis force. Why? Uh, now, see uh, if you yes, this is the, our earth, I do not know why I I have made it green. Uh, I think a greener earth is better let us uh, support for green earth anyways uh, suppose uh, this earth is rotating with an angular velocity omega right and there is a person holding a ball standing at this point okay making an angle theta with this axis rotating axis the principal axis here now in this direction the omega that is the angular velocity is directed this is the position vector of the particle this small r is the distance of the particle from the axis I am ignoring the dimension of the person this is the i, I axis that is the x axis here I have taken the z axis and the y axis is going into the plane of paper okay at this instant of time now as the person is holding the ball he is not moving anywhere with respect to the earth then it, his velocity with respect to the rotating frame should be zero his i mean the ball's velocity with respect to the rotating frame is zero so there won't be any coriolis force here right but of course there will be some centrifugal force okay that uh, having a magnitude just do the cross product omega cross r that means omega cross r will be directed towards the y axis so omega r sin theta because the angle between them is theta times j cap into the plane of paper mm, so k cap dot j cap and again do the cross product you will see that it will be omega m omega square capital r sin theta i cap i cap means the centrifugal force is directed away from the axis which it should be right and the final expression is m omega square small r distance from the axis uh, and we are uh, actually familiar with this formula so nothing new here but what i'm trying to convey is uh, if you are st stick, sticking to the ground I mean if the particle is not moving with respect to the rotating frame it will not feel any Coriolis force right uh, of course uh, for to feel the Coriolis force he should move with respect to the rotating frame uh, so let us try to understand that part now suppose I am taking the same person uh, his uh, right hand is a little bit longer in this picture anyways uh, now this guy 
while standing on the earth is actually throwing the particle in vertically upward direction. So, for this guy the vertically upward direction is is along this line right and he is throwing the ball with a speed v r in the vertically upward direction with respect to the rotating frame that is the earth. Angular velocity is here. I have considered this as the x axis. Now, if that person would have hold a compass, uh, it would point this way as the north. So, I have taken this one is the north and which is also the y axis and the z axis is coming out of the plane of paper. So, x, y and z fine x x y and z right now in this case v r is non zero uh, i won't discuss the coriol uh, sorry uh, centrifugal force once again because it would fetch you the same result but now and of course in this case the coriolis force uh, sorry centrifugal force will keep on changing i am not interested in that uh, anyways, the centrifugal force is very small because angular velocity of the earth is not very large actually. So, let us find out the Coriolis force here. Now, the term Coriolis term, you know, the formula looks something like this. Okay. So, minus 2 m omega cross v. So, omega is in this direction. Okay. V, v r actually v r is along i axis, x axis. Okay. So, omega cross v r will give you omega v r sin theta okay, minus into the plane of paper omega times omega cross v r will be directed into the plane of paper. So, that is minus k cap. So, this whole term becomes 2 m omega v r sin theta k cap. So, the net force net Coriolis force that you will observe acting on the particle while you are standing on the while you are observing the particle standing on the rotating frame will be along the positive z axis. That means, if you throw the particle if the person throws the particle and tries to keeps on keep on observing the particle will feel that a force that is a Coriolis force is acting in this direction the force is directed uh, coming out of the paper. So, in reality that ball should not have landed on his hand on the same point from where it has been thrown right it should land on some other point ok. So, this is the thing. So, what do you think I mean if you are standing on the earth and uh, now suppose the angular velocity of the earth is considerably large ok. Now, if you throw the ball vertically upwards uh, sh what do you think should the ball uh, land on your hand or it should land somewhere uh, in some other point. Suppose, if you are standing on the northern hemisphere somewhere on the northern hemisphere and if you throw the ball vertically upward what do you think in which direction the ball should deflect towards right or towards left please let me know in the comment section ok. Again I am repeating the question if you are standing on the northern hemisphere and you throw the ball vertically upwards in which direction the ball should deflect towards right or towards left please let me know ok. Uh, considering this diagram ok, considering the rotation of the earth is like the uh, diagram represented on the screen. Anyways, what the hell? Anyways, uh, so just let me know in the comment section. Now, in reality how would have been the motion if the angular velocity was considerably large. Now, if you throw the particle vertically upwards, uh, so the particle should have followed this dotted curve, okay, this path. But why don't we observe this one? Because the value of angular velocity is very small, and the deflection is negligibly uh, negligibly small. Okay, uh, so to notice that uh, deflection, you need to throw the ball uh, very far away from the earth. I mean, with a large velocity, you need to throw that particle. Then only you can see some measurable deflection ok. So, I hope I made this concept a little bit clear uh, ok. So, I think now you will be able to solve this question uh, why do not you try this question see 
uh, f rotation is equal to so see this is the term that has been given in the question right in 2016 j advanced paper why didn't you try this question right now okay uh, i'll try to solve the, this question in our next video so if you are new to this channel please hit the subscribe button okay uh, i hope you all have found this video helpful and informative uh, i'll see in the next one peace take care